Welcome to One Little Coder. This week in AI News, we have a lot of interesting things to cover from a new product. In this week, you're going to learn 21 important AI news that I feel you might have missed from other channels. Starting with Stable Audio. Stable Audio is from Stability AI. It's a music generation AI. Unfortunately, Stability AI did not release the model as an open source, which a lot of people were disappointed with, but I was not. I wanted them to make money. Anyways, that's a different topic altogether. So this is a simple system where you can go and give a prompt and it will generate music for you. You can play and then play with that. The license is what is quite important. So the free edition, the free uh, account in which you generate the music does not let you use for commercial purposes. But once you pay money, it lets you use for commercial purposes. Still one thing that I'm quite curious and uh, interested to learn about is how can you make sure that if your AI generated music is not being used by somebody else and how does it play with like I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. But anyways, stable audio is quite good. Anthropic, a company that is quite popular among a lot of people, especially in the US and UK, because everything that they enable is for US and UK. So they have partnered with a very popular consulting firm, BCG. So they have partnered with Boston Consulting Group, BCG, to bring cloud to enterprises, especially to BCG clients. And this will help them use for a lot of use cases. One use case that I recently learned is a lot of people, especially due to the high context window, people upload the document and ask questions from Claude. So this could be like one of the use cases for their partners as well. This news was quite funny and also interesting at the same time. AI chatbots were tasked to run a tech company. They built software in under seven minutes for less than one dollar. So this is like multiple agents put it, working together and then creating something. And that is what this recent paper from uh, Brown University and also multiple Chinese universities have proved that just by using a version of chat GPT's the GPT 3.5 turbo version, they managed to develop softwares and uh, they came up with some details around like how this went. The software or the system or the framework that was creating all these things is called chat dev. So I'm quite interested in looking forward to cover more about chat dev. But basically they asked it to develop a game and it managed to develop the game and it, it you know it is quite good. As anybody who has used Meta GPT or um, any of the AI agent, especially the coding tool, you know that AI is quite good at solving one particular problem, but AI is not good at doing a lot of things. And that is where chat dev kind of came into picture because you have got CEO chat dev, you have got CTO for chat dev, you have got like a designing agent, you have got like a programmer agent. You have an art designer agent. I think this is an approach that I was recently discussing with somebody because what people are already doing is they're taking one agent and then making it try to make it a lot of things. But what ultimately should happen is you should have like a combined system of multiple agents working for a common goal. I think this is like quite amazing to see that this has happened. Databricks, that company that doesn't need any introduction, has managed to raise a $500 million funding at a valuation of $43 billion. This is quite huge. So the CEO of Databricks, Ali Ghosti, has said that we are excited about this partnership with NVIDIA to build custom large language models. And um, NVIDIA has become one of the important investors in that. And this also aligns with what Databricks and both NVIDIA are trying to do. Make everybody fine tune their own model, make everybody run their own model unlike you know running it on chat gpt this is also part of the enterprise push a lot of key companies are doing it so it seems like a huge deal and as you might have already known databricks sometime back acquired a company called mosaic ml which also had open source previous models like large language models and also managed to have a platform where you can go fine tune and offer models at a, for an api like paper cost so this seems like an interesting combination now Another funding is there is a new company called Petronas AI. They have announced a $3 million seed round. And they're again talking about enterprise push. But the interesting thing about this company is they are not talking about the traditional area. They're talking about LLM evaluation. So they're saying current LLM evaluation is unscalable and ineffective. And they're giving entire details about why this is not working. And they're trying to make LLM evaluation easier, faster, more robust. And that can gain enterprise confidence. This is quite interesting for me to honestly see that uh, somebody is talking about LLM evaluation. As we know on this channel, we know how much benchmark are broken so good to see that there has been a company that is involved very interestingly if you see there is a name that is Repelit CEO Amjad Masad is also part of it who has their own LLM tool as part of Repelit AI so 
Together AI that has released multiple products in the past have also released a new framework for accelerating LLM generation. It's called Medusa. So if you see this thing without Medusa, you can see how much time it takes to generate something. But with Medusa, how much time it takes to generate. So they are talking about why LLM generation is inefficient and how do you how, how can you speed up and one of the things that uh, recently became quite popular is something called speculative code decoding, which also became part of LLM llama cpp library but they are talking about how to marry simplicity with efficiency also part of speculative coding and uh, they created medusa i have not tried medusa to be honest but you know you can see the details about how the large language model looks like especially with the uh, transformers you have got these heads so they are talking about how these heads go and then how they are going to predict and what kind of details it is this is something that i'm pr definitely trying to learn more and uh, looking forward to make a dedicated video about so this is Medusa from Together AI primarily, especially um, the trying to make LLM generation or text generation faster. Another interesting use of AI and also enabling others to use AI is Roblox. I don't know if you have kids, probably you know Roblox, but if you're into gaming, most likely you might have heard. Roblox is a very huge gaming network. So it's like a gaming platform in itself. What Roblox is trying to do is Roblox is trying to give generative AI on roblox platform for creators to are enabling the creators to use generative ai tools to faster generate games and that is exactly what roblox is you have got something called a roblox assistant that can offer a lot of things so it can offer them to build codes or uh, you know build something new for example you can go ahead and then say that okay i like this mesh how do i make it more realistic okay roblox can then roblox ai or roblox assistant can suggest it and then you can ask follow-up discussions have follow-up questions and uh, roblox ai or roblox assistant will help you do those things this is to accelerate the gaming development and also accelerate everything that is part of the game creation process and that is quite um, quite an interesting thing because now once again you are actually putting ai in the hands of a lot of people and uh, roblox is quite popular uh, for gaming development and uh, you know you can see what are the different avenues they are trying to include roblox ai like you have got roblox assistant you have got like avatar creation and you have got like wo moderating voice communication which is um, once again, something that we saw that uh, Call of Duty and other companies are trying to do using existing new technologies like Whisper. Something that was quite interesting and also shocking and surprising for me is Kaggle has got a new section called Models. I don't know how long they have got it, but very recently, especially as you can see, 18th September or 18th August, they made an announcement saying that Llama 2 model are going to be available on Kaggle and in just a click of a button you can get, generate a notebook that is also powered by GPU every month you get like a certain amount of GPU hours then when I went back and then I saw like I could see a lot of models like Llama 2, Code Llama, Alpaca but this is the first time wh what I'm seeing is like a company like Meta has made the model in available in itself especially given that Kaggle is owned by Google and Meta and Google are not necessarily like a friendly partners it probably this is um, this is Kaggle's attempt or Google's attempt to create a universe of model repository just like Hugging Face. Anyways, competition is good. I'm definitely looking forward to see some other model hub just like Hugging Face. Not because, you know, I've got something to do with Hugging Face. But the fact that you have got more decentralized model hubs are always good. Like you've got Civit AI for stable diffusion models. Now you've got Kaggle to upload the model. So definitely looking forward to see this new direction of Kaggle. So for you to train AI models, one important thing is you need humans to label data or you need humans to do RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback. But in a high wage country like Finland, it is quite hard to find low wage workers who would do these kind of jobs. And that is exactly where a company has found out that prisoners, prisoners who are in jail would do this job. In fact, like they are, they, they are being made to do this job for $1.67 per hour where they have to just go uh, help the model like tagging and fine tuning and all these kind of things. So they are called click workers. So these prisoners are being used as click workers in Finland. This is a very interesting story to be honest. This also asks some interesting questions about how economy might divide um, I, I know like honestly speaking like personally I think AI is going to be a like a great leveler but also at what cost is something that a lot of people have been wondering like for example OpenAI hired workers from Kenya to do RLHF 
it also you know comes with a lot of nuances like what would a western person would uh, vote or what would an eastern person would would what would a japanese would vote i think it this brings in a lot of nuances about how rlhf might be more effective Nvidia has something called Tensor RT LLM. So this is basically they want to accelerate large language model inference on Nvidia H100 GPUs. For example, if you see H100 a GPT-J 6 billion inference H100 without Tensor RT LLM was like four times better than uh, A100. But if you see Tensor RT LLM based um, or the H100 with that is eight times more efficient or faster. And uh, this is what L nvidia is trying to do with tensor rt llm if you want to read more about how tensor rt llm can help you in better uh, you know cost efficiency or energy usage or anything like that this is an article that you should definitely read james briggs one of the most popular youtubers in the generative ai space has also put out an article for pinecone where he works as a developer advocate so the article goes like this llms are not all you need and it talks about three main problems of llms one, it is a black box that it completes, it doesn't auto complete. Because of that, it is also unpredictable. It is prone to hallucination and it does not provide up to date information. And then this article goes on and talks about what kind of things that you can use to overcome all these three. In a nutshell, you can use prompt engineering, you can have uh, like external knowledge base, you can have like conversational memory, and more importantly, you can have like protective guardrails that will make sure that the LLM does the right job as it is supposed to do. It's a very interesting English article you don't need a lot of technical knowledge for you to read it definitely recommend you to go through it if you're interested in the llm space especially if you want to move llm to production talking about production there is one more very interesting article that says building rag a retrieval augmented generation based llm applications for production this article is more technical than the previous article we talked about it goes into the details about how can you develop a rag based llm from scratch and how can you split tasks like for example loading the data, chunking the data, embedding the data, indexing, serving across multiple workers. It also talks about evaluation and it also talks about certain differences between the hybrid, sorry, open source models and the closed models. And it goes into the details. It's a highly technical article. I would definitely recommend you to read the first one before, before coming into this article. This is also on any scale, a platform that lets you do a lot of things around LLM. So definitely interested. Uh, if you're interested in the technical details of RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation Apps, Go through this article, you might find it helpful. This is another very interesting piece from Mark Serafim. So Mark Serafim is a very popular content creator and also who works for PyTorch and who has created this uh, presentation called Why Won't Llama 13 Billion Fit on My 4090, which is NVIDIA RTX 4090. So this article talks about why would you require a particular amount of graphics memory um, and that's that's the basic fundamentals of this article it goes into the details of how the transformer models would uh, acquire memory why would it need particular part of memory what part of this model would require all this memory and it does a pretty good job i would uh, i would love to see if there is a video for it but at this point i could not find any video but at least this presentation should help you with the details about why would you need an, a memory that you need and what kind of features can for example load in for a bit which is like a quantized loading would help you get it so this is a very interesting presentation unfortunately there is no video at this point but at least you can go through the presentation in itself talking about new large language models once again we have got a new large language model called refact code llm which is a 1.6 billion state of the art llm for code just for programming or nothing else and that says it reaches 32% of human evil. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm quite skeptical about any benchmarks. But in a nutshell, this model is a 1.6 billion parameter model, has knowledge about 20 programming languages, has a context window of 4096 tokens. It can do code completion and chat capabilities and also the permissive license code available for commercial use. The next open source model that was quite interesting this week is a Desai LM, 6 billion parameter or 5.7 billion parameter model. This model has come with a new technique called, uh, they've got their own proprietary neural architecture, which they're calling it auto NAC. And because of this architecture and also because it uses something called variable grouped query attention GQA. So this model is quite fast. It has been fine. It has been designed in such a way that this should be faster in the inference. 
it has come with a context window of 4096 tokens and you can go and see the details about how much uh, are the benchmarks like what did it score but the most important thing is this model is super fast this model is amazingly fast i'm definitely looking forward to try this model this model also has got two variants one is the six billion parameter model the second one is the chat model and it's of the instruct model so you can try either the code completion or the chat uh, the text completion model or the chat model and you can play with this model and they've got like a decide coder which is also a coding specific model in itself definitely worth trying it talking about models i cannot close this week without mentioning 5.1.5 5 1.5 is a transformers model based with 1.3 million parameter it comes from microsoft research currently with only a research license not with any um, commercial availability so 5.1.5 is a model that is being trained on synthetic data which we specifically talked about on a separate video which i'll link it in the youtube description this model has focused only on having a clean sane data and this model made a huge amount of news because this model kind of uh, kind of gave a competition to llama 2 7 billion parameter models like everybody was surprised to see oh like a 1.5 billion parameter model can challenge a 7 billion parameter model but you might find it interesting in the next section but the good thing here is that this model also have uh, gave a given way for a lot of derivative models like uh, prolific fine tuners like technium has already released their own version of this model the most interesting thing for 5 1.5 one of course the model is good but also there are certain claims that this model might have got been trained on the benchmarks data set in itself which the model creators already managed to address saying that for example like they managed to they did their due diligence to see if there was any data contamination what is data contamination for example when you train a model you want to make sure that the model is not being trained on benchmarks data set in itself because now the model can learn what is available in the benchmark data set then the benchmarks do not make sense because you basically memorize whatever it is available here it's almost like you know giving the answer sheet during before exams and then asking the same question so but this this problem goes deeper into it one of the reason i liked this particular piece from Susan Zhang is not just because it talks only about 5.1.5 but also goes deeper into the existing problem about how LLM as a community deals with data contamination or what kind of robust evaluation metrics or benchmarks we have in place. Anyways, it's an interesting piece. I'm also planning to go through this in a separate video if it is possible. But as you can see, like I've got a lot of things to make in my backlog with not a lot of time. But honestly, this is a very interesting thing for you to check if you are interested in LLM benchmarks. This one especially talks about GSM 8K, which is like a math related stuff. But um, but yeah, if you are interested in knowing more about it, there are people who have responded to this particular tweet and explained what could be happening. Definitely try it out. Jumping into the paper section now, we have got like two important papers, which are quite long for you to read. That's why I didn't go into a lot of different papers. One is the rise and potential of large language model based agents, a survey. This is a very interesting paper. It goes into a lot of nuances about what is an AI agent according to them and what, how did AI agent as a concept come into picture and what kind of things are happening, like what are people are doing. It's a very pretty long paper. It's, uh, it's more English than more technical. It's something that you should definitely read. Even like the before you go into references, the paper in itself is like almost like 47 pages. And you should definitely, you know, at least like learn certain aspects of it. If you are interested in the space of autonomous agents or AI agents, or if you have heard about Meta GPT, or if you have heard about like Ader, if you have heard about Auto GPT, this is a paper that you should definitely read to understand what is happening here in this particular space. The next paper that I wanted to talk about is called Rain. It says your language models can align themselves without fine tuning. Once again, what people are trying at this point is can we skip RLHF? Can we find a way to skip RLHF reinforcement learning from human feedback? Because human beings are going to be the bottleneck in creating high quality large language models. If you see 5 1.5, 5.1.5 tried to do the same thing without fine tuning and RLHF by using only synthetic high quality data. If you see RLAIF, which is reinforcement learning from AI feedback, tried to do the same thing. So now this paper is also trying to do the same thing. Can your large language models align themselves? And that is exactly what this model paper is introducing. Okay, there is question here and there is generation here. There is a self evaluation of harmless level and it does the censorship by itself and then it comes back and gives you the answer without having a human being doing RLHF which is reinforcement learning from human feedback goes into the details about how this works and this is like another name 
the rain in this means rewindable auto regressive inference which is something that we have seen in the past little bit before is somebody fine-tuned or somebody trained a model with backspace as a token where the model itself will do censorship and also edit itself and then give the output so this is a very similar concept altogether but quite interested in seeing how this actually works how does it work in forward how does it work in backward and how does it censor itself and then give the final output definitely go through this paper quite an interesting one so one more interesting news is from vv8 gorilla part one it's again from a very popular youtuber connor shorten so this paper this paper or this is again like an article blog post that goes into the detail of how you can create an api model like for example if your model whatever large language model that you have if you want this model to generate api calls very effectively what all things that you can do and for that what they have done is they have taken this gorilla model and trained it with vv8 data set so if you go see the architecture it's a very interesting one so they've got this gorilla llm and they've got they've prepared their existing data for fine tuning they've managed to fine tune that model with the vv8 data which is um, again like a vector db company so they go into the details about everything that they have done to get the model in such a place and their idea is also to make this available at some point uh, as part of the vv8 architecture but the point here is that if you were to fine tune a model to create apis like uh, existing api api calls based on your own documentation i think this is one of the best article available on the internet that will tell you what all things you need to do exactly. For example, you could be a company who has got like a developer documentation. You can follow this article and then use the developer documentation, create a open model, which is fine tuned based on uh, something called Gorilla to create your own large language model that can generate API calls for your own system. This is a very interesting piece. Definitely go through this particular piece. Finally, Andreessen Horowitz A16Z, once again, trying to be very active in the generative AI space, has put out a very detailed report about a uh, lot of uh, insights around the applications that you use Th there are certain nuances to be honest for example the top 50 jna web products by monthly visits so if you see this particularly talks about web products and if you see the web products like for example tools like midjourney cannot be ranked at the top because it's a discord based bot so there are certain products that rank really up there are certain products that do not rank really up but what i was honestly surprised to see is like character ai ranking much above bard much above po uh, and like tools like quillbot playing a role more than hugging face more than mid journey um, yeah i'm i'm quite interested to see what is going on into this thing but uh, but again like this is a very interesting report you can see uh, the fundraising detail you can see the web visits like especially you know how the ranking is looking like and you can see how the traffic is changing for existing products and all these things this is a very interesting document especially for example if you want to do angel investing if you want to build a new product for all these things you can go ahead and then see here how the current llm or ai generative ai product spaces not just the model space the product spaces that can give you more insights about what kind of product you should build how do you design your gtm go to market strategy and a lot of other things overall thank you so much for watching this video you managed to learn 21 new news ai news especially i hope i did justice to your time if you have any feedback please let me know in the comment section otherwise all the links will be in the youtube description see you in another video happy prompting